Hi, I'm Erin Barr with Compassionate Pet Solutions. We're going to talk about how to treat an injured cat paw. The most important thing to remember is when you've got an injured cat, you need to take it to the vet as soon as possible, especially when you're dealing with injured cat pads or cat feet. Feet walk on the ground all the time, they're very prone to infection, it's also very painful for them to walk on, so it needs to go to the vet as soon as possible in order for that to be treated. If for some reason you can't go to the vet right away and you want to try to do something at home before you can take your cat to the vet, the first thing you need to do is have someone assist you. You have to remember that your cat's going to be painful. It's going to be injured, it's going to try to bite you or try to scratch you anytime you try to mess with something that's injured. So wrapping in a towel can be very effective because it helps contain the rest of the feet and then having your assistant kind of hold her by, by the top of her head or her scruff in order to prevent her from biting. Once he's got the paw out and he's got his hand back behind your elbow to keep it out, you can kind of take a look at the paw and see if you see anything. The first thing you want to do is either use some cold water or warm water or some hydrogen peroxide. And just use the hydrogen peroxide to clean the paw pad so you can get a better look. You can tell how bad you think it is. If you see something that has splinters or glass in it, then using something like tweezers to help pull out any kind of debris you have can be helpful and help limit the pain your cat's in. But remember, it's very painful and pulling out anything or even touching it may cause your cat to bite. So you need to make sure someone's holding it. Once you've determined that there isn't anything stuck in the paw and you've cleaned it the best you can, it's a good idea to put a light wrap on it. The wrap's gonna help prevent the cat's foot from getting infected and help limit the amount of debris you can get in there. You're gonna start by getting a non-stick pad. You don't want anything that's gonna stick to the wound because the wound can, can be pretty sore and you wanna to try to avoid that. You take a little bit of Neosporin, just plain Neosporin without any kind of pain medication or numbing solution in it. Just put the Neosporin on the power pad that's injured. Just kind of place it there and then you're going to take your non-stick pad, kind of place it on top of the pad. And once you've got it placed, you're going to use some vet wrap or some bandaging material. Just lightly bandage this foot up. It's very, very important that you do not put this bandage on too tight. The bandage needs to be on snug, but not tight, because you don't want it to fall off right away, but you also don't want to cut off any blood circulation. So you just want to lightly bandage the paw, just kind of wrap it once or twice. Make sure you pull on the vet wrap or the pants material and don't pull it against the skin. Once you've got the bandage placed, you want to use tape to help secure it in place. With this tape, you basically want to have some of it sticking to her fur and some of it sticking to the bandage. And just lightly place this over. Now, cats hate having anything stuck to their paw pads or anything stuck to their feet in general. So the first thing she's going to do if we let her go is she's going to try to shake that off or she's going to try to pull it off. So she's already trying to go for it. So the first thing you want to do is put some kind of e-collar on the cat. There's two types. There's a soft e-collar. It's very nice and soft and comfortable for the cat to have, but it's flexible so they might be able to bend around it in order for them to, to still snag that, that pad and take it off their foot. The other thing you can use is a nice little hardy collar. The snappy collar is awfully more uncomfortable, but they're also very effective to prevent the cat from getting at it. Just keep in mind that you want to be able to cat to eat and drink, even though the e collar is on. You may have to remove it for them to be able to do that. So in this case, we're just going to put the soft e collar on her, and basically it just goes over, and we're going to tie a nice little snug knot or bow behind her head to prevent her from getting at it. And now the main thing we need to do is we can let her up. We don't want her to be walking around too much. We don't want her to be going outside or getting in the dirt. So we basically want to keep her in a nice clean environment. And we want to keep that from getting dirty. So if you see this getting wet or it's starting to get really kind of nasty looking, you're going to need to change the bandage. Ideally, we want to keep that bandage on until we go to the vet. That should be hopefully as soon as possible. But if for some reason you have to wait a day before going, you may need to change that bandage in 24 hours. You don't want to leave a bandage on too, too long because it could be too tight or it could be causing more harm than good.